you know, know your why, it's so good because so much of what we strive for in life is just more. We just want more stuff, more things, more, 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 more upgrades, right? And we think it's going to make us happy, but you know it doesn't. See, but the secret is not found in more. The secret is wrapped up in this one word, contentment. Contentment. Contentment and living on the rest, it teaches us contentment. And I know what you're thinking. Contentment, the American dream. Mm. Yeah, come on now. It doesn't really sound very appealing, right? You're like, contentment. Oh, wow. I don't know about that one, right? But this is the key and the secret to financial freedom. But the world tells us something, something else. See, there's never been a commercial that has fueled our contentment. In fact, every marketing strategy focuses on our discontentment. And today there's actually algorithms out there that know exactly how to push your discontent button. It's kind of scary. And so we're there and and, and what marketing does, what the world screams at us, what we're watching on TV, online, all that stuff, it it reminds us that your life is not what what it could be. Oh. So what do we do? So, so we go, okay, I got, I got to buy this now. Call now. One click and it's yours. Oh, right? And I know, that, I know that feeling. I have fallen into that feeling before I get this. You know what's amazing? Everyone over the age of, you know, 35 or 40 years old, d- does everyone remember, do you remember when you used to dream about the salary that you now make? Do you remember that? I mean, that was the dream. That was the goal, right? I heard one, uh, someone recently just say this. I used to dream about the salary that I'm now starving on. Wow. See, contentment is a really big deal because it deals directly with your heart's intent. That's why it's the secret of financial freedom because when it comes to your financial freedom, it's not about making more but being content with less. Being content with less. So let me just get real practical again with you. Uh, My family and I, we don't have cable TV. Okay, we don't have cable TV. There was a a day long ago when I had a satellite TV and, and, and the NFL ticket and all that and then it's like for every kid I had, I lost channels. I don't know how, you know, some of your parents out there, your dad's are like, oh, that's where it went. Yeah, okay. We live the antenna life, and we'll do everything we can to scan for the right channels. We're like, we'll move the antenna here or there, and it's wonderful, right? I remember at the beginning of COVID, um, I, we just fell into the, like, we have to sign up for every subscription. And so it's like Netflix, Hulu, well, Hulu has this, but and then Peacock, and then it was like, and then it was like Apple TV, and then it was like, you know, all, just a subscription after subscription, because we were just indoors a lot, and and, and recently we just took it a look and we're like, why do we have so many? So we, so we cut back. Another thing you can do and, and uh, saving some money, hey, make your lunch. Don't pay for lunch. Right? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And I'm realizing maybe I should make my lunch instead of pay for my lunch. Hey, if you're going to go out to lunch or pay for your lunch or maybe, uh, maybe you actually don't pay the delivery fee, go and pick it up and you'll save a gazillion dollars on the delivery fee, right? Uh, for our family, Goodwill and Walmart is a way of life. All right? Goodwill and Walmart, baby, it's a way of life. And that's all good. We're just like, oh, let's see what Goodwill's got. Some of the best dates I've ever had with my wife were that cost less than $30. And you're like, Miguel, you're cheap. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to be wise, trying to be smart. Because here's the thing. It, it's not about how expensive. Yeah, you're thinking, man, Valentine's is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. That's why I'm talking about it, okay? Um, so, so some of those, those best dates, it had nothing to do with how expensive it was, but how intentional it was. Some of us think we have to, get, but my kids, I need to spend time with kids, and I got to go on vacation to Puerto Vallarta, okay? Okay, real quick, I remember sitting in a, a timeshare pitch, okay, because you get like free stuff. So I heard, oh, I'm going to get free dinner if I listen to this pitch for an hour? Okay. Okay, and the timeshare pitch. And it was fine. It was great. They pitched it. Awesome. You know, God bless you. But then I remember the, oh, one of the ladies pitching saying, uh, how many kids do you have? I'm like, I got five kids. And they're like, what's the point of having kids if you can't go to Puerto Vallarta? 
And I was like, oh, you lost me there, man. Because here's the thing. Uh, just a walk to the park. Uh, j- just, hey, who wants to go to the grocery store with me? A, a drive with your kids can actually make such impactful memories that cost very little. My wife and I, we own both of our vehicles. And we're going to drive it until it's dead. And then after it's dead, we might actually push it a little farther. <laughs> My wife and I, we, uh, we, we own both of our phones. And it's glorious. <laughs> but like once a month, approximately, we will get a text message from our carrier that says, for, for a new upgrade, we will give you $700 if you upgrade today but we just can't help ourselves. We love not having to pay a monthly payment. And it's wonderful. Living on the rest teaches contentment, but listen to this very, lean into this, but always wanting more, always wanting more does a few things. It brings fatigue. The more you have, the more energy it takes to maintain it. Always wanting more brings more expenses. If the grass is greener, so is your water bill. Okay. Okay. Always wanting more brings more anxiety. The more you have, the more you have to worry about. Listen, I don't have to worry about getting the barnacles off my yacht. So I don't have a yacht. <laughs> Always wanting more brings about relational conflict. The number one cause for divorce in America is arguments over money. So it's gone from death do us part to until debt do us part. So here's what I'm saying. God promises to provide for our needs, not our greeds. Please know the difference. God promises to provide for our needs, not our greeds. And living on the rest teaches contentment. And the secret to avoiding discontentment is gratitude. Living on the rest teaches contentment and enables us to be grateful. It positions us to be grateful for what we have. A long time ago, I was figuring out how to live on the rest and and really be grateful for what God has given me. And one of the things I had in my life at that time was a Gillette shaver. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to say thank you to S.C. Johnson and family provided this at the time they owned it, uh, Gillette Products. So I wrote a letter, um, you know, dear R.C. Johnson family, thank you for your product. It makes my face smooth and it smells good. Period. The end, right? It was really simple. Well, like about a month later, I got this letter in the mail addressed to Mr. De La Mora. <laughs> it's pretty fancy. So I open it up and in the letter it says, thank you for your letter. We shared it with our entire staff. And then it says, please enjoy the enclosed $50 gift certificate for any future Gillette products. $50? So you know what I did next? I wrote BMW. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Here's the thing. Gratitude begins where my entitlement ends. Everything belongs to God. This is what we're talking about. Everything belongs to God. The way I say it is what you think you own is really just on loan. We came in with nothing, we're going to leave with nothing. What you think you own is really just on loan. But Miguel, that was my idea. Who gave you your brain? Even our very breath is borrowed. God owns it all. Living on the rest teaches contentment. Contentment is the secret to financial freedom and being grateful is the practical step in how to get there. Why? Because gratitude turns whatever we have into enough. It turns whatever we have into enough. 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 6. Listen to this. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. 
They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. Listen to this last, this last line. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Everyone look this way. You can do this. We can do this. Your financial situation is not your identity. It is not who you are. It's just where you are. And no matter where you are in your financial situation, you can do it. We can always get back on the path. This week was rough. Last month was rough. I didn't account for this. I didn't. Just get back on the path. You can do this. But Miguel, you don't understand my financial situation. It is so, so hard and difficult. It's impossible. Listen, let me tell you a true story. This is a true story. There was a mother who raised five kids on her own. The dad wasn't around because he got caught selling drugs and went to prison when the kids were really, really little. Christmas was toys for tots. The only stable income this mother had was a monthly welfare check of $950. Rent was $825. Gas and lights was anywhere between $50 and $75. You're doing the math. You're already figuring this out. And then you still had to pay for gas and groceries, right? This mother and this family went through such difficult situations. This mother actually had to strategically plan where she would go when she ran errands. She would have to figure out the shortest route, and she, she couldn't afford missing something because she didn't have the gas to return if she forgot something at the store at the grocery store. When when, when gas was on E, what this family did was this mother would turn to her kids and say, all right, start praying. I don't know if we're going to make it home. So the kids actually turned into a game with these kids. The kids would start praying over the car. And as fun as it was for the kids, the mother was really believing for a miracle to just get home. Even buying the, the most simplest of groceries for this mother and this family, uh, like, like a, some milk, was difficult. In fact, often this mother would use powdered milk as milk for the family. Or sometimes she would add it to the regular milk to, ex, to extend the life of, of the 2% milk that, that she was able to get. There were even times that she found that someone had a, a, a goat, you know, dairy farm and Gave her some goat's milk. And to say that, listen, that this home life experience, to say that that it was financially difficult would be an understatement. But this mom continued to trust in the Lord to give first, save second, live on the rest. And at at the time, financial freedom just didn't seem just hard. It seemed impossible. And anyone that would talk about financial freedom was offensive to this mom. But you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how difficult it is. I'm trying to survive today. But she budgeted. She kept her eyes on every penny. She saved what she could and found such creative ways to live on the rest. She realized that God owns it all. This is his. I'm just trying to be a steward and a manager of it all. And so she honored God and managed the few dollars that she had And today she has financial freedom and margin and and all five kids are alive and well. In fact, her son is standing before you, speaking with you today. To encourage you, we can do this. We can do this. Give first, save second, live on the rest. You can get out of debt. I can get out of debt. We can get on the path, the wisdom path that God wants for our life. This is the biblical path to give first, save second, and live on the rest. And it might take 10 steps to get there or 10,000 steps to get there. But the hardest step to take is always the first one. So what is your next step What do you need to do today?